What's going on? I wanted to uh, talk about something that happened to me, oh, I'd say a week or so ago at a local gun shop. Um, now, say what you want about AR builds. Who makes them? Who builds them? Uh, where the pro parts come from? Um, everybody's got their own opinion. Like, you know what they say, er opinions like buttock holes. Everybody's got one, and they normally stink. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I go into a shop. Well, first of all, the, uh, the shop is a place I've been to quite a few times. Um, they had parts that I could find for this AR, that previous AR build that I showed you in the previous video. Um, bought some parts there, you know, everything seemed fine, ran, 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 whatever. So I'm like, hey, you know something, I want to build an A2 variety, AR. Okay, so it's going to be cheaper for me to get a pre-populated lower than to get a strip lower and build it all again myself, you know. So I... I can already say now that I built an AR lower, so it's like, it's cheaper, get another one that's already built, blah, 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 okay. Now, one thing that drives a lot of people nuts in the AR community is the bias towards different, different companies. Like, oh, you know, somebody's junk and somebody's awesome, blah, blah, blah. If you're paying less than X amount of dollars, you're getting a piece of junk. It's like, okay, sure, whatever you want to do. Um, I offer the challenge. You want to get shot with a Daniel Defense or a PSA? Which one's going to make you less dead? You know, it's all the same. I mean, there's a handful of companies that actually take these that actually forge these receiver uppers and lowers and they're not going to be an issue unless you don't know what you're doing or somebody else didn't know what they're doing you know and not everything's perfect of course you can have you can have good stuff and bad stuff come out of the same pile it just depends on what happened you know so anyway I'm like hey I'm gonna do this AR another AR build okay sure so it's like, I want to see how much this other gun shop I've been into that I bought a bunch of parts from for the first one, mind you. I bought a bunch of parts from this guy already. Everything seems to be fine, except one thing I'm going to get to here in a minute. So I go in there and I'm like, how much, is there, how much do you uh, charge for a transfer fee? And he's like, what are you getting? I was like, well, I'm going to get an AR lower, you know. And he's like, well, where from? And I said, PSA. And he's like, ah, oh, I don't do PSA, man. They're junk. I've had none of the problems with them, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I transferred for people before, and then they screw up on them, and, and uh, they blame me for it, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, okay, whatever. They don't fit up with other, you know, they won't fit up with other uppers and lowers and they can only do it themselves and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whew, okay, whatever. So, uh, I still went ahead and bought what I was getting there and left. I'm like, told my cousin about it who's been dealing with PSA for a lot longer than I have. And he's like, that is BS. You know, I was, I was like, yeah, I know because, you know, it, you may have some incompetent builders out there, sure, but when it comes down to it, the parts themselves, especially the uppers and lowers, they're all forged basically in the same handful of places they get other places from, you know, other parts from, good grief. It's like, that's frustrating. It's like, okay, super bias here. And that's one thing that drives me nuts about some people. It's like, you know, you get the same parts from the same different people all the time, and all of a sudden they're junk and they're not, you know. If you pay, you, you know, you can't pay 500 bucks for an AR because that's just a beginner rifle. It sucks. It's going to blow up on you. You're going to die. And then, you know, 
war breaks out, and it's like, I've seen some people before, they're like, you know, war, it's funny, huh? The war breaks out, and these guys are out there with their budget rifles and stuff. And like, okay, sure. Um, they're going to last as long as they need to, probably. You know, like I said before, which is going to kill you worse? A Daniel Defense? A PSA? A Bushmaster? They're firing the same round? You know, there's not a lot of difference in between them. They just you got namesake. Like you're gonna pay a lot more when it says Daniel Defense or Colt or Bushmaster. You want PSA, Anderson, whatever. And guess what? They're probably not all that different. <clears throat> you know, they like make fun of the guys with the budget rifles. Like, well, I'd rather have some guys with budget rifles around me in a war scenario than a bunch of cocky idiots who think that one shot's going to level the whole field or something at one time, you know, good grief. Uh, anyway, so anyway, I was there and he told, me, he told me that load of crap and I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm shopping here anymore either. My cousin wrote him off a long time ago. You know, I get stories from this guy, you know, about this guy and his company there. Um, one thing was like another cousin of mine was getting a trigger job done getting a polishing job on the contact surfaces and all that stuff and he's like yeah it took him forever to get it back and then when he got it back he could feel absolutely no difference in the trigger pull whatsoever i'm like wow okay um you know other people saying other things he's just not basically the bottom line was the guy's not trustworthy so i'm not going to go back there anymore I'm going to order my, my parts. Hopefully the parts I bought from him are going to survive. This one didn't. Huh? So here we go, you know, PSA junk, PSA junk, PSA junk. Well, guess what PSA did to uh, one of the parts he sells in his, his uh, shop there. This is the charging handle I was using in that video and the previous one before that, which you didn't see because I had too much... Uh, Fails to fire, which that was my fault. First build, the usual thing, you know, hammer springs and backwards. Anyway, look, if you can see that, I want you to look right here at the uh, latch hook. You see what I'm seeing? Yeah. It's bent backwards. It is curled. And... PSA's junk with the stuff he's not selling in his place isn't. Ha! Ah, funny. So what I did was I went ahead and got online, paid more. He had, okay, this thing was in his place for $19.99, like $20. Obviously, that's low for any charging handle. But I was like, first charging handle, I'm going to, you know, at least test the whole thing out with this. Well, it seemed fine for a while until I got this other uh, upper. And I took a real good look at this. I was like, well, this is not going straight into battery as far as it should. So I kept looking at it and looking at it. Finally, I realized the flipping hook. That hook right there. Get over in the light. See that curl? Yeah. That hook right there is bent, curled in. Like this. That is not exactly a good thing. It's not, it no longer catches in the little spot there where the, the latch hooks in on the, on the uppers anymore. So I'm thinking, yeah, right. So I went ahead, I went online, and I ordered two more charging handles, which cost more than $20. Yes, sometimes you do get what you pay for, but some things doesn't make any difference. So anyway, I went online, I got a couple of uh, Radian Raptors. These things are nice. And guess what? This thing looks exactly like the Radian Raptor, but there is absolutely no name on it. It is completely without a name. It is a completely blank, non-labeled knockoff, basically, of Radian Raptor. It's like... And then, yes, this, this is a ambidextrous charging handle, which those two are also that I ordered. I got them in. They're nice. I haven't actually used, used them yet, but I've pulled them in and out of the upper. And they haven't done this, and they shouldn't. 
but I thought that was insane. It's like, you know, PSAs are junk, but obviously everything in his friggin' store has to be nice. Uh-uh. No. Like my cousin said, this is, this is the uh, model they call the Craptor. Said the Raptor. Uh, that was interesting <laughs> for right now. I do have the receipt. And I still have the bag it came in, too. These are parts, like the other lower parts I put in that PSA lower, are parts out of his store. <clears throat> and he's got them separated into individual baggies with his own label on it. So I, there's no way to tell where they came from. I'm hoping I won't have to re replace them later on down the road. What I got from him from that lower was the, well, the, the A2 pistol grip, which uh, I don't think you can mess those up too bad. This is in a brand new package, so I'm like, I'm gonna, oh, it should be fine. The other parts I got were more internal. I got the uh, rubber spring detent and spring, the uh, bolt stop, bolt catch, or bolt release, whichever you want to call it, and the detent and spring with that, and the roll pin that holds it into the up the lower receiver. I got the uh, magazine button and detent spring and everything, which I don't see how that could mess up too easily. The other, I mean, the rest of them seem fine. I don't know. I'll just monitor them throughout the course of my time using that one. Um, but no, I mean, you know, everybody's like, well, PSA, they. Look how low their prices are. I can't make quality. It's no good. You gotta pay four million dollars for something that's quality. And it's like, yes, you do get what you pay for in some things, but you don't always have to worry about that. Will anything fail? Yeah, I mean, people have had high dollar stuff fail on them all the time. So <laughs> it's you know, sometimes you get what you pay for, and sometimes you get more than you bargained for. So. You know, you just have to see what you got and run it for a while. Make sure it's going to hold up, you know. Of course, I haven't put enough rounds through any of them to really tell what's going to blow up and what's not. But, you know, eventually I will. Eventually we'll find out. Even, you know, parts and high-quality stuff wear out after a while. Or, that, you know, there's a manufacturing defect or there's something weird going on with something. But, okay, you know, that's the world we live in. Nothing's perfect. <laughs> You try to do what you can and do the best you can, and, you know, if it's not good enough, you find something else to do with it. You know, whatever. But like I said, I thought that was hilarious. Now, I can also tell a difference. This is like a Chinese no-name knockoff. Um, between this and the Radiant Raptors that I just got, this is a lot more gritty feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously this is not made for uh, a whole lot of heavy use either. I would give you the name of the place, but some of you, if you live around where I do, you might know. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, I say um too much. Uh, nah, anyway. Yep, that's a little interesting story that I got going on there with the AR situation. But the other two that I got should last about quite a bit longer than this, just based on the name. We'll find out, won't we? Yes, we will. Got an up, another upper that came in a little while ago, which is an A2 upper. Um, it's got the, oh, I just get it, hold on. 20 inch barrel, A2 front sight. You got to bury that lug. That should come in interesting if I can find one for it. All this got the A4. They call this the A4 carrying handle because it's detachable. Um, here's one of the uh, Radiant Raptors I got. See how it looks eerily similar to that one that messed up? But this one just feels completely different. Let's see if I can get that. This is not a no name. Gosh, uh... 
See that radiant raptor? Yep. Got that one going in this. But see, that's what I was talking about. See that, that spot right here where that latch, there we go, where the latch attaches. The other one just won't do that <laughs> anymore. Anyway, this has got the A2 Earth Sight, which has the 300 600 yard or meter, 300 600 meter setting on it, where the attached. The old attached hand guard had a 300-800 meter setting, which I realized that not long ago. Uh, pardon me if I point. You know good and well there's nothing in there to shoot the safety freaks over here. Anyway, it's got the same flash hider on it that my 16 has, the A2. It's like the original birdcage, but it's actually solid on the bottom like a muzzle brake. So from what I understand, that's to help keep dirt and debris from blowing up on you if you're laying prone on the ground. Get a little out the side though, but you know, not too bad. And so, yeah, it says right here, 5.56 five, NATO, 1 and 7 twist. Yeah, it's got 1 and 7 twist just like the other one, so both of these will be able to handle 55 grain and on up bullet weights pretty good. And so that's that. I still have to clean the packing junk out of it and the oil and grease and whatnot. Anyway, that's no by no name charging handles from people that don't that are insanely biased about what they want to let you have and not. Moral of the story, Warrior 526 signing out.